Hi friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. Today's projects will be upcycled using rice paper. We have 12 thrifted finds that you might recognize from past videos. This Tuesday at 7 p.m. I'll have a bonus video with the rice paper tutorial, tips, tricks, and projects. This tutorial will also be available in written form over on my blog along with this free printable. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So project number one, we're going to be making a decorative indoor bird bath. And this is one of my favorite projects. It was not only fun, but I think that it was a really neat transformation. I applied a couple coats of paint, decided it needed something else. So I added some of the dark wax from DIY. Then on the inside of the bird bath, I made a design and printed it out on rice paper. After I cut the piece to fit, I did use some spray adhesive, or you could also use Mod Podge. I joined the two together with some E6000. I love the end look of this project. I have the full video for this project linked below, and there are some other projects in the video that you might enjoy. I would like to repurpose some pieces this summer and make a real bird bath for my garden. I've got two regular size soup cans and a larger one. I covered these cans with one coat of gesso and one coat of chalk paint. I'm gluing on the images with a thin coat of Mod Podge. The garden tool image I did get off from the graphicsfairy.com. The words I just typed on canva.com and printed them out. I filled them with some of that beautiful lavender that I found on Amazon that is linked below for you. I took some sandpaper and distressed the edges and used spray sealer all over the entire outside of the can. I have two little metal pails that I applied some baking soda mixture with white chalk paint. I printed out these labels onto rice paper that I found on the graphicsfairy.com. So I realized after I cut this label out that I wanted to tear around the edges to give it a little bit more of a vintage look, which I do that, but I don't. But first I apply some antiquing wax just around the edges and then all over the entire label. You'll notice in these projects that one of the buckets comes out a little bit more aged and grungy looking than the other. And I just applied the label on with some Mod Podge. I did not go up over the top of the label with the Mod Podge. I'm going to just use some spray sealer or a coat of polyacrylic after. And it doesn't matter if you put the label and then apply the antiquing wax or vice versa. Just make sure that you don't apply the antiquing wax over the part that you want to glue. But if you accidentally do, or if at a later date you decide to add a label, the wax can come off with some magic erase. Skillshare is an online community that promotes creativity and learning by offering thousands of classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, writing, and much more. You can take classes to level up your current skills or take classes to relax and learn something new like my daughter and I did together taking watercolor classes from Amaryllis Henderson. Skillshare is easy to access, easy to use. You can take the classes anywhere and anytime that you choose. The first 1,000 people to use the link or my code, Creative DIY Purpose one will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So this picture frame is gonna get a makeover. First, I applied two coats of the chiffon cream chalk paint from rust -Oleum. And then I took a damp cloth and distressed the edges. I decided that it needed a little bit more to go with the picture that I printed out to put inside. So I mixed up a shade of green that I thought would work and applied it on to the frame, wiped it back. I don't show it in the video and I apologize. All I did was go around the inside with some antique wax very faintly and wipe it back and then applied white wax all over the whole entire frame, let it sit for a while and then buff that back. 
The graphic is from thegraphicsfairy.com. I saved that on my computer, went over to Canva, added my Bible verse, and printed it out on rice paper. I bought this wooden game carrier. I really liked the handle on it. I didn't bother taking out the sticker because I'm going to apply uh, two coats of the gesso and one coat of the paint mixture. All right, so here I am just taking my cordless sander because I will use any excuse to break that out. And it just went along the edges because I had a little bit of paint buildup on the corners and I wanted to make it nice and smooth. I found a vintage wheelbarrow print on the graphicsfairy.com. I put it into Canva and just added some text and that way it will fill up the whole space. I did make a couple errors that I want to let you guys know about when using the rice paper. You can see how the color tones are different between the two pages. I wasn't even thinking and I printed the one on the left side that I'm holding and came right out and Mod Podged it. It does run a little bit. I'll let you know how I fix that in a minute but I did not give the ink time to absorb and dry into the paper. I'm applying the print on with a thin layer of Mod Podge. I'm not a big fan of covering some of my projects with Mod Podge. I'd rather use other types of sealers. And on this one, I am going to use some white wax because I want to tone down where the ink smeared a little bit and try, I'm trying to make it so it's not as noticeable. However, you can still see the seam. I must have overlapped the seam of the paper. So I think this project I am going to eventually redo. Now we're gonna update this little birdhouse. After I got the piece clean, it did give me a run for my money as far as sanding. It had a lot of varnish on it and a lot of raised edges. So I think I went back two or three times, but we got it. Now I'm applying two coats of the DIY paint and vintage linen. Amazing coverage on only two coats. I'm gonna remove the perch because I'm gonna use something else. I went on Canva.com and found this image of a clock face that I printed out on rice paper. I think it would look nice. I'm trying to find the middle point, just gonna fold it a couple times and try to even it up as best as I can. I'm just gonna trim up the top edges so it fits in there snugly. I wanted to try to use this Elmer's spray on glue and see if that would be a little less messy than breaking out the Mod Podge. And it went, so the purple does vanish. I was a little nervous. I'm like, oh no, but the purple dries. And this is actually, it actually worked out really well. Uh, I was able to make sure that the entire piece had glue. And I just took, at the end, I just took a cloth and just wiped around it. And it dried really nice and even. Um, barely any wrinkles. So I think I'm going to try this again, or at least maybe try some uh, Mod Podge in a little spray bottle. I will link this full video for you below for this project. If you'd like to see how I did the roof and a little bit more detail on how we added the wooden knobs for feet. And I will add them in the description below because I think that they're the perfect size, not only for feet, but little toppers um, when you're making cloches or repurposing some jar lids. So I thought that this old key would make the perfect perch. I went over to canva.com and typed up a Bible verse about birds, which I thought was kind of fitting for this little birdhouse. I wanted to add something right on the bottom. What's great about the rice paper and an inkjet printer, or at least mine, I don't have to spray that ink with sealer before applying it with a thin coat of Mod Podge. Even when I used the heavier glue up at the top, I didn't have any problem at all with running. So that cuts down on a lot of time versus printing it out on tissue paper. I will go and spray the entire piece with sealer, including the roof, uh, after I get the whole entire piece done.
I purchased this wicker candlestick holder for $2.99 and this little sign for $1.99. I did apply a little bit of the textured paint around the edges to cover up the two holes from, from the ribbon was previously on here to hang it. Applying some Mod Podge right to the center. The black and white advertisement came from the Graphics Fairy and I saved it over on Canva.com and added the green sack stripe. And I printed it on rice paper with my inkjet printer. All right, so I love the way that this came out, but I wanna match that green sack stripe. So I'm gonna add some Apothecary from DIY Paint Company. Then after that has had a chance to dry, I'll apply a coat of DIY white wax and let that sit on there for a bit and wipe it back. And then I apply E6000 to glue the two pieces together. This project was from one of my more recent videos and one of my favorites. It I purchased this little carrying tray at the thrift store. I believe I paid $4.99 for it. I applied two coats of the Rust-Oleum spray paint in a matte white. Found a pretty print over on Canva.com using their pro version. And then I copied and pasted until I could get the print all lined up. I applied it with a thin coat of Mod Podge. I applied two coats of the Rust-Oleum spray sealer all over the entire piece. We'll be applying one coat of gesso, which is an opaque primer, and one coat of chalk paint. Then after the paint is dried, we're going to be applying this beautiful graphic. This beautiful graphic and more are available for purchase from my friend Betty Lou Cox. I have put her link in the description box below. I decided instead of cutting the edges that I was going to lightly tear them, I'm applying Mod Podge right in the center to try to get the graphic lined up. Now I'm going to apply a thin coat of Mod Podge. Up. You could also choose to just cover it with your favorite sealer. For our next project, we're going to be adding this graphic onto an empty tin can. I did apply two coats of white chalk paint from Waverly. Once the paint is dry on your can, or you can even choose not to paint your can, this is a two minute project. This would be so cute with all different size tin cans on a table arrangement with flowers. Have a little mini cast iron pan. I applied two coats of gesso and a coat of chalk paint to the inside. And then I found this nest image on graphicsfairy.com and I printed it out on rice paper, which I'm gonna apply some Mod Podge. I'm applying antique wax to some Scrabble letters that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna spell out the word nest, add some jute twine, and a little wooden bird that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree. Took this thrifted dish and painted it with that very rich dark blue that you see there. And it was just a little too much. So I went over it with a coat of chalk paint and then I wet distressed it back to show up some of that blue and applied some printed rice paper on with Mod Podge. And the print was one of the elements over at canva.com. And I will link the video below for this project as well. Friends, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in our next video. At have a super blessed week.